welcome Hoosier fans to another victorious episode of the Assembly Call. As tonight, your Indiana Hoosiers beat the Florida State Seminoles at home in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, 80-64. to It was Indiana's first game against, obviously, a good opponent, as we know, as we've talked about. And after jumping out to an 11-point lead at halftime, the Hoosiers saw Florida State just slowly chip away at the lead. Segment after segment, Florida State would make up two points, make up three points, until they came all the way back to almost getting it tied and maybe taking the lead back, and Indiana exploded over the final six minutes of the game to end up winning by 16 in a game where the Hoosiers made plenty of mental mistakes. And there's going to be so many things for Archie to look at in the film session and for this team to clean up. But for them to still win by 16 points, they did it with toughness. They did it with playmaking. They did it with togetherness. There were contributions off the bench. It was just a terrific performance from this Indiana team and a game that, you know, without really knowing what we had after that playing that November schedule that I think everybody can feel good about with the Hoosiers getting a big victory. I'm your host, Jared Morris. I'm here with Andy Bottoms and Ryan Phillips, and we are going to break it all down for you on this edition of the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. And let's start this show the way that we start every show, and that is with our Hoosier Proud Banner Moment. For the Banner Moment, I'm going to about the six-minute mark in the second half. It was 63 to 58. This again is, you know, Florida State had cut that lead down. You know, it felt like it would be a dogfight all the way to the end. And you'll remember this play. Devontae Green was dribbling out top, looked like he was over, you know, looking over at Archie Miller, trying to get some instructions for what to do on the play. And his defender reached for the steal. And so Devontae quickly goes behind his back, drives in, takes contact, scores, made it 65 to 58. And this was one possession after. He had, I think, committed his fourth turnover with just an atrocious entry pass into Joey Brunk that got stolen. But when it was his time to make a play, as he was all night long, Devontae was ready. And, and I, I just I love this play because it was what allowed Indiana to overcome those mental mistakes. It was toughness, absorbing the contact, making the bucket anyway. And when it was his time to make a play, he made it. And that's what Indiana did over the final six minutes. When it was guys' time to step up and make a play, they did it. It gave Indiana that 65-58 to 58 lead and proved to be the decisive points because Florida State would only get to 64. That bucket, even if Indiana didn't score again, they would have won. But on a night when Devontae Green was outstanding and you probably could have picked from 15 different plays that he made, that to me is the one that stands out the most. That is the banner moment. And our banner moment tonight, as always, is brought to you by our friends at Home Field Apparel, a company that was founded by an IU grad and that remains based in Indianapolis. And, you know, by now, hopefully you've been to homefieldapparel.com. Hopefully you've ordered some of their gear. It is the most comfortable gear that you could find. The T-shirts, the sweatshirts, so soft, so comfortable, even after being washed. And they have unique logos that you're not going to find anywhere. The Bison logo. Some of the logos that they released this year during the football season. I mean, where else are you going to find a Xander Diamant t-shirt celebrating the bucket win, right? Well, you can get that t-shirt at homefieldapparel.com and so many other items that they have there. And because you're a member of the Assembly Call audience, you get a big discount. They have their they had their Black Friday sale going on. It was 30%. It was huge. That ended but Assembly Call listeners can still get it. Use the promo code CYBERASSEMBLY, and through Friday, you can still get 30% on, 30% off your entire order. And we have some new Assembly Call gear there, too. That really comfortable sweatshirt material, our script Assembly Call logo is now on it. If you go to homefieldac.com, you'll see the Assembly Call selection. You can use that promo code CYBERASSEMBLY on those items, too. So homefieldapparel.com or go to homefieldac for the Assembly Call collection or go to homefieldiu.com to go directly to the IU collection. So many options for you. And that promo code CYBERASSEMBLY will get you 30% off your entire order. All right, well, it is time to move the ball, find the open man, and get some opening thoughts from the rest of our team. And let's start with Ryan Phillips. Ryan, your rant on this Indiana victory. I got to be up in like six hours, but I'm here for the duration, guys. This was awesome. It was it was really great to see Indiana put in the kind of defensive intensity. There were lapses, and there were mistakes, and, and there's things that this team, which is still ridiculously young, has to clean up and and we saw a lot of you know gaps open in the second half for easy drives and they were letting Florida State get too deep whatever I'm looking at the first half and the first half after that first that opening stretch where they got some subs in was fantastic defensively just fantastic and 
though the second half was ugly at times offensively and there was stag it was stagnant and they got bailed out by Devontae Green time and again. The thing about it is you thought the first half was great. They scored 41 points. They scored 39 in the second half. They shot 56%, 55.6% for the entire game. I mean, when they had their opportunities, they converted them. The key is making sure you have those opportunities over and over again and, and don't get bogged down the way they did in the second half. But again, a young team still trying to learn how to fight through these things. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, kind of invisible for for a few stretches of the game, needs to learn how to be a five-star, needs to learn how to assert himself more. So it's not just Devontae Green out there making making plays individually, which we saw a lot of tonight in easily what I think was the best game of his career. Uh, I don't even think it's close. I know he's had you know close to as many points before, but this was just, had he, had he not made those last couple free throws, had he not hit that last three, I still think it's the best game of his career because he was willing to 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 lead and willing to be the guy and was making smarter decisions for a lot of the game. Um, what I'll also say about that, uh, you know, Devontae Green, you can say that, well, he kind of bailed him out at times. Well, yeah, that's why you have Devontae Green on the roster, though. I mean, that's why you don't let a guy like that transfer out of the program. That That's why you have a guy like that and you put your faith in him and why – you become the president of the of the Devonte Green fan. Great club. night is, for the it, fan it, club. Great night because you believe in a guy like that, and you believe that he can make plays for you and, and make plays that help you win a game. Uh, we didn't see the balance tonight out of IU that we've seen offensively, but we saw a lot of balance defensively. We saw balance on the rebounding. Um, we saw balance on the turnovers. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, but that's the thing about this team, though, is that they do they are going to win or lose as a group. They're not going to win or lose based on. You know, Romeo Lankford has to score 25 or Jawan Morgan's got to get a double double or, you know, what we saw last year. I, I think that this team wins and loses as a group. And um, I, I think we saw, you know, some of their strengths, some of their weaknesses tonight. But at the same time, they're a tough team that plays really hard. And uh, and, and they really did lock it down defensively in the first half and, and got a 15 point lead at one point and, uh, and, and did allow Florida State back into it. But again, this is a team that there's a lot of mistakes from this game that they can learn from. And and look, the turnovers are going to be an issue we're going to get to, but until Rob Finnessy is back and able to run the point the way we know he can, turnovers are going to be an issue for this team. And tonight they were able to overcome it because of the way they played on the defensive end. Andy, your bottom's line on this IU victory. I mean, a lot of different ways to go, but uh, I think we'll talk about Devontae a lot. Uh, his performance was outstanding uh, as everyone knows, and there was a, a stretch in the second half where he looked like the only guy who really wanted a part of the fight that they were getting from Florida State, who really just tries to grind you down over the course of the game. They're so physical, they just wear on you. And I think any IU fan, uh, whether you've watched Florida State or not, you could pretty much see how that's how that game was going. And it was hard not to sit and worry about what this game was going to look like in the last few minutes when this team had really uh, you know, just gotten leaned on the entire game by them. And, and I thought the team responded incredibly well. They made some good subs and uh, it's a good segue to a guy that I don't know that we'll talk a ton about, but I thought had some really big moments, even though he, he made basically one dagger and didn't do a whole lot else offensively, which is what he's known for. I thought Demise Anderson gave this team some big time minutes off the bench because once Florida state uh, basically chained their, uh, two large goons to the bench who would uh, who would not be heard from in the second half. I mean, I you really had a hard time figuring out a way to play Joey Brunk for any kind of stretches, and and so that really meant that I you had to turn to somebody else to play in that rotation. And and Archie turned to Demise. He put Jerome in for a few minutes, who struggled uh, in that situation. He was really able to lean on Demise, and he still makes mistakes defensively, but he was busting it out there trying to to get in the right position he made some good recoveries uh, on plays like that and just was steady um didn't do anything spectacular short of that you know three-pointer and he had another one rattle out where he went on the wing on a fast break but I thought he played really really well a good uh if you there's a lot of good things to take away as you spin forward for this game but should be a confidence builder for him uh, and, and a sign of a guy stepping up when the team really needed somebody else. He didn't handle the ball a ton. Um, th- those things were challenges without Rob, as as you guys have mentioned. But uh, I thought a really solid performance from him, and I think uh, somewhat emblematic of what Ryan said about guys really liking to play for one another and and really grouping together during a stretch of the game where Florida State usually 
usually kind of grinds people out and you would think that, that that would be the end. And and that group that was on the floor there over that key stretch really, really pushed IU over the top. Ryan, you want to hop in here? Yeah. I, Demisi Anderson, I, I really wanted to jump. That was going to be my next topic, Andy. So you really hit a great one there. Uh, Demisi played 20 minutes and was plus 13 and only had three points, but he was out there for two really key stretches. One of them was he was in that first group of subs that came in. Uh, I don't know what point that was at, Jared. I'm sure you've got that marked down. Yeah, it was they, right they, after the first media timeout. It was, so it was after the first. I wasn't sure if they had, if they had subbed right before that or right after. Yeah, it was 11 to 7, and our defense had been terrible up to that point. Yeah, awful. They were just getting, they were getting to the hoop doing whatever they wanted. He brought in, I believe it was Hunter, uh, Demisi, and race. and uh, and oh, it was race. Yep, Demisi. Right, the, the first three he brought in were Demisi, race, race and, Devante. and Devante. Devante. And they basically yeah. scored seven straight points right away, and then did a similar thing in the second half, and they forced four straight turnovers. So yeah, no, yeah. and the intensity, the intensity ratcheted up a huge amount there, and and really that was impressive that the way they did, that, especially with a guy like Demisi. Look, a team like Florida State that has really good uh, perimeter players that can attack and score and are athletic and step out and shoot threes, you know, and aren't just one dimensional. They're going to attack a guy like Demisi because they know they've seen on film. He's not a great defender and he stepped up and moved his feet and, and it was night and day. And I've been a guy who's been really hard on him defensively and said, well, he's got to make shots to be on the floor. If he doesn't make shots, then he can't be on the floor. He played really well tonight. Like he absolutely did. And, I think, you know, the crowd have, had a lot to do that. Guy's intensity ratcheted up in that first half. Second half, he comes out. He's just from, worked his butt off to get better. Like, yes, he has steadily gotten yes. better defensively the last four or five games. Coach Agreed. pointed it out a few games ago when he sat on the bench because he wasn't playing defense. And since then, he's really gotten better. You and and I'll say this the intensity of the crowd really got a few guys focused and playing hard. Jerome Hunter looked a lot better defensively in the first half of the second half. He ran into some, you know, poor, he made some poor decisions inbounding the ball. And I think that affected him defensively. Um, but Demisi actually took over inbounding the ball and did really well with it. Um, he was decisive on his inbounding and then defensively, he just, he moved his feet. He was locked in. He was focused and you could tell that big game atmosphere got him kind of ratcheted up. You could just see it. He was, he, sometimes his face doesn't change and he's kind of, you know, he looks a little sleepy out there, you know, just kind of wading through looking for a shot to shoot the ball. No, he was really focused and really locked in. So that was great to see. I mean, I hope it's a consistent thing. I hope it's not just like one big game. Everybody got locked in, but uh, got to give credit to him. Uh, also, craziness on the night playing a team like uh, like Florida State. It's worth noting that uh, Devontae Green was a plus 24 on the night against that backcourt. So, I mean... I mean, he, ro- he rose to the occasion. He absolutely rose to the occasion. Yeah. And, you know, I-, I talked about that huge play that he had in the second half. And, I mean, he had he had so many throughout the night. It was almost like, you know, every time Florida State looked like they were going to come back and cut into the lead, and there was a stretch where Trace did this, and we're going to talk about it to lead off the next segment. But pretty much every other time, it was Devontae making a play. Go back to the first half. It was 22-20. to 20. I think Indiana was up like 22-16. Florida State went on a quick little four-point run. They got it to 22-20, to 20, and Devontae was like, uh-uh. And he made a three-pointer. He had a great pass to Justin Smith that set up a dunk or set up an and one, and boom, right there, it's 28-20. I think he would make another three-pointer right after that to make it 31. You know, And he just did that all night long when a play needed to be made. He stepped up and, and made it. And you can live with the turnovers. You can live with some of those mistakes because the thing that this team, you know, what we talk about all offseason, why was Devontae so crucial to this team? Because he's got that one thing that no one else really has is he can just go get you a bucket. <laughs> you know, it's he can Troy create Williams a effect. shot. Yeah, he can create a shot. He can drive into the lane. I mean, he had a couple beautiful drives. One time early in the second half, he rejected a screen and just drove right in and had that little up and under. He can do that. Yep. And the you spin know, on that was unbelievable. And look, you know, we're going to talk a lot about the good things because there was a lot of good tonight. Al Durham did not play well in the second half. You know, I don't want to say that he shrunk from the moment, but he didn't bring it in the second half like he brought it in the first half. And I don't know if it was fatigue or what it was, but, you know, Devontae basically had to take all that playmaking role. And Armand Franklin really did a nice job, too. And we'll certainly talk about him. Yeah. But, you know, Devontae had a lot on his shoulders in the second half. And I know he had the four turnovers in the second half. I don't think he had any assists in the second half either. But the playmaking, sometimes, especially against a great defense, you got to just have a guy that goes and gets a bucket. And he did it tonight to the tune of 30 points. Now, one other guy that I want to mention this segment, and again, we'll talk about Trace next segment because he was spectacular, 
we got to talk about Justin Smith because Ryan, I think we all noticed early in the first half, he had that play where I think did he he turned oh yeah he had turned it over, made a terrible pass, a, pa- a bad pass and just jogged back. You know, didn't you know? It looked like one of those. It's like Justin, if you hustle, you're a great athlete. You might be able to block, block this shot. shot or at and least it affect just, the shot. Yeah, and it just kind of looked like he gave up on it. That proved to be the outlier because yes. he was tough. He played hard. One of my favorite plays of the game uh, was late in the second half. And I believe it, yes, it was 65-58. Someone threw a bad pass, and the ball was about to go out of bounds. He dove on the floor to save the possession. I mean, fully laid out, which everybody was doing in the second half, and it was great to see. He ended up getting, you know, they ended up calling a timeout. He got fouled after a strong take in the post, made both 67-58. And that was part of that little stretch there where, you know, Indiana extended the lead out and just wouldn't give it back. So, you know, Andy, I thought, you know, on a night when so many guys played well, I thought Justin Smith led with his toughness. Like, I thought he was really tough defensively, and I thought he got on the the glass pretty well. Um, You know, and just those little plays, laying out, saving possessions, that helped Indiana combat the turnovers. That, you know, Demise Anderson tapping out a couple of rebounds. Like, Indiana was was Yeah, that able last to one was be, huge, especially. Yeah. yeah, you know, Indiana was able to be opportunistic, saving possessions, which helped to compensate for the 18 turnovers. Well, and, you know, Justin did that at the end of the end of the first half when Al got forced into the, the corner, took that shot against block. Justin heads up, gets it, turns around, shoots, and, and makes a basket that pushed the lead back up to double digits at halftime. Uh, and... and yeah, you know, you guys, we, we texted about that play earlier. I thought defensively at the beginning of the game, he was really, really intent on uh, on where he needed to be. And, and I think he continues to – I think if you really watch him defensively at the beginning, you, you see why Archie raves about how good he can be defensively and how – how much he's learned about where to be in the system and, and doing those kinds of things. I, uh, I thought he played really well on that end and, and, and was a guy who matches up pretty well with what Florida state has. They've got a lot of like athletic wing type players and, and particularly the way they played in the second half, it allowed him to slide back to the four as IU played a bit smaller lineup, but he gives enough versatility. And the other thing, there was a couple times that he really, when other guys didn't seem to want to even handle the ball, he was not afraid at all. I think that's a testament to to him. That was something he said he really wanted to work on uh, in the off season. And there were there was at least once, maybe twice, that he ended up bringing the ball up the court because other guys kind of got there, and he confidently brought it up. And I I think you continue to see that confidence grow with him, as you said. You know, the play that we, we looked at as being a poor one did become the outlier in that scenario, and. Uh, really did play tough. Continues to be a good free throw shooter over the course of the season. Did get jinxed by the announcer missing those last couple yeah. after he went after that that ball and took a took a spill. But uh, I, I, yeah, just a, another solid performance from him and another game in which uh, when we get to the game balls, which will be perhaps the most uh, the least uh, controversial. One, yeah, least maybe. controversial. There you go. That's the, the way to do it. Uh, pick ever. It's another one where he probably under other circumstances would be the second guy in line potentially to get it uh, based on some of the plays he made, but uh, was, was overshadowed a bit by a, a career night from Devante. Yeah. Justin just looked like he was, he was willing to attack at times. I mean, I'd like to see more consistency in that attacking, but he was aggressive going for rebounds that bought him a couple fouls there. Um, and, and he wasn't, he wasn't wilting. He was playing like an upperclassman and uh, I'd like to see him maybe work on some more one-on-one stuff when he gets isolated on the wing, or maybe there were a few times he posted up, it looked like he could have gone and he kind of kicked the ball back out. Uh, those were my only complaints though. His effort was, and in, in, you know, other than that opening play, I tweeted, I, I texted all you guys, it was just like, what? It, this better not be what we get from him tonight. And it wasn't. It was one bad instance. And um, he showed a lot of effort and was really focused. And, and I thought, uh, you know, played one of his better games. And hey, 35 minutes out of him. And to be fair, you know, that bad play came right on the heels of an outstanding defensive possession where he helped and recovered beautifully and then got an offensive putback. So it's not like it even took him that long to get in the game. He made a couple huge plays early, um, but he was he was great. Justin really led tonight, and that was great to see. All right, coming up as we continue our breakdown of Indiana's big victory over Florida State, I will point out tonight's meaningful moment that you might have missed. It's going to feature Trace Jackson Davis, and then we will go inside the numbers to highlight the most important statistical notes from this game. You are listening to The Assembly Call. Stick with us.
This is Jordan Halls, and I never miss a shot or an episode of The Assembly Call. Thank you, Jordan. You are listening to The Assembly Call IU postgame show. I'm Jared Morris here with Andy Bottoms and Ryan Phillips, and we are breaking down Indiana's 16-point victory over Florida State in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. And it is time now for tonight's meaningful moment that you might have missed. And we're going to spend a little time talking about Trace Jackson Davis because, you know, look, this was the Devontae Green game. Devontae answered the bell over and over again. We talked about, you know, how tough Justin was. But I thought there was a really important stretch in the second half where Trace basically kept Indiana afloat and for two minutes just owned the game for Indiana. And it started when it was 57-52. The offense was getting a little bit bogged down. It's about the 820 mark, and Trace basically just took it from the top of the key and said, I'm just going to go score, and had a huge dunk, put Indiana up 59-52, to 52, the crowd's going, and you kind of thought, okay, here we go, we got the momentum back, let's get going, but on the next defensive possession, Florida State misses a three, Indiana doesn't box out, they get a weak side uh, a rebound for a dunk, uh, then a turnover, Florida State scores, and all of a sudden, it's a four-point swing, we lose all the momentum, it's 59-56, to 56. And they're going in on the next time they get the ball for a layup to cut it to one, which would be the closest that they've been in a long, long time. Trace blocked it. Just another one of his incredibly instinctive athletic block shots. And then the next defensive possession, he got a steal, was basically just single-handedly keeping us in the lead as the offense was struggling. And then came down on the next possession, got an offensive rebound, got fouled, knocked down his free throws. And for that two minute, you know, right after that is when Devontae took over, hit his bucket. And then, you know, obviously Indiana blew the game open. But I really thought, Andy, that stretch from Trace was huge because not a lot was going on offensively or defensively for Indiana. And it's almost like for that stretch, Trace said, guys, hop on my shoulders. I got this. I'm going to protect this lead. And then, you know, you guys can help me close it out. But for a freshman to make that many plays in a short period of time, you know, against a tough team like Florida State, I was just really impressed uh, with what he was able to do there. Yeah, things were really teetering uh, at that point, I, I think, for IU, as you, as you mentioned. And he was able to be a, a steadying guy, uh, e- even when things were a bit frenetic. And, you know, the, the challenge for him in a game like this was there's so much pressure on the guards outside. How does he get himself in position to get the ball? Where does he get it? with chances to, you know, how does he give himself opportunities to score? He had the one nice drive um, for the dunk, uh, as we talked about, which was which was a good one. But it was a challenge to really get him the ball in post-up situations, particularly in the second half with all the pressure that was there. But he found ways, whether that be through rebounding or just general activity level, to to work his way into free throws and, and get himself to the line. And, and certainly – you know, block shots, but also altered some others as he was in the lane. Guys, you could tell were a little bit, um, you know, they knew he was there and and would try to either initiate contact or fall away from him at times going to the basket. So I think there were a couple shots around the rim that Florida State missed that could potentially be attributed to to the defense that he played. So, I, yeah, it wasn't his. I think to Ryan's point, it wasn't necessarily his best game. I think it was just just because it was so difficult for him to really get the ball in a comfortable situation. Um, but, but made stepped up and made big plays down the stretch for a guy, you know, he and Justin played the most minutes of anybody. I think they each played 35, uh, when I looked yeah. at it last, which is a yeah, decent amount more than anybody else. Um, and so in a game that physical, uh, to be able to do that, he was playing a lot of having to close out and recover, uh, on the perimeter when Florida state, uh, you know, went, went a little bit smaller and was, you know, putting some of their big guys out there. So, uh, he had to cover a lot of real estate defensively to do what he did. So he's going to continue to get better at, at that part of it. But a, a good early test for him uh, that he that he passed overall with some uh, solid stretches of play like the one you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I think adjusted for competition and context, this is by far the best he's played. It may not be the most like eye-popping box score numbers, although 15 points, 8 boards, 2 blocks, 14 free throws, that's a pretty good box score five, line. 5 but, of those rebounds yeah. were offensive. Yeah, and too. 35 minutes in a tough physical game. That's a freshman. God, he's good. And, and you know, the two steals were big, too. I, I think that the thing about Trace in this game, and, and it, it happened more in the second half, and look, he played a ton of minutes, so I'm sure he, and he was playing a ton of minutes against really good competition. I'm sure he was worn down a bit late. You saw his free throws kind of flatten out a little bit at the end. Uh, he's he's going to be tired after this one, and I think it showed on the court a little bit in the second half, uh, but, you know, he only he only took five shots. I mean, 
The problem is he got fouled on a lot of the shots that he took, so those don't count. But he was three of five from the field. I, I didn't think they they force fed him the ball enough in the second. And he's right. The the passing lanes were closed. They tried to throw some bounce passes into him, which I don't know why we're throwing bounce passes in traffic, but that's for another show. Um it it you know, they didn't get the ball to him enough, I think, in the second half to let him go work. And when he but when he did get to work in the second half, he was getting fouled and, and he was using his aggressiveness on the boards to get fouled. And, and, you know, his ability on the defensive glass as well, he'd get fouled in some scrums there and, and he got to the line. He took 14 free throws. And, and the fact that a freshman is getting the respect of the officials to get that many calls, Romeo certain didn't, certainly didn't get that last year. And the reason why is because. Romeo is working on the perimeter primarily. If you're working in the post and you're doing the right things in the post, you're going to wind up getting foul calls. And Trace has done a great job of that this year, of getting to the line and using his ability, not necessarily to score from the bounce, but to get fouled when he goes up. And, and that is a skill. Getting to the line is a skill. James Harden is making a career off of it right now in the NBA. It's, you know, it's something that helps your team out to get to that line because you put the other team in a bad situation with fouls and then you also are able to get those free points in line. He missed five of them tonight. Again, I thought he looked tired at the end, and and rightfully so. He played thirty five minutes, and he's a, he's a freshman. I mean, that's you're gonna wear down. Um, but I, I thought he did a fantastic job getting the line and, and asserting himself enough to get to the line, despite not having a lot of one on one opportunities in the paint to score points. He is well, at I the think- top one fifteen in ten different statistical categories on Ken Palm. His free throw rate ninety eight point four percent. He's taken sixty one two point field goals and sixty free throws. It's a freshman. Yeah, that's pretty it's pretty amazing. <laughs> but I mean, they can't stop him when he gets one on one. I mean, you really can't stop him when he gets one on one. In the rare cases, he does get one on one. So what happens? Guys foul him. I mm-hmm. mean, that's just the way it is. And I and it, it, this was a game. Not the team. It was brought up a lot. Certainly brought up a lot on the broadcast of this being the first real test. But he certainly, from an individual standpoint, was was a guy that I think there were. I don't know necessarily questions from IU fans or, or whatever, but it was definitely like the, the level of physicality that was going to be there in this game, the level of athleticism that he was going to go up against is not anywhere near what he had faced. So there was a, I think people were, and, and rightfully so to a certain extent, curious to see whether what he had done so far was, you know, how much of that was influenced by the competition. And I think tonight was a good step in the direction of uh, of really proving himself and saying, hey, there's not going to be a Big Ten team that is going to come up against him that is really going to, um, you know, they may make him struggle. They they will certainly challenge him, but but one that is going to be able to really shut him down because in a game, like you said, Ryan, he took only got credited with five field goal attempts, was certainly fouled on, on a number of those, but, um, you know, didn't end up taking a ton of shots in that regard. Um and struggled to get the ball at times was still incredibly impactful on, on the game. So that's a, a positive sign for sure. As you look forward. One more moment that stood out and, you know, there were a lot of these that we, that I could choose from for this guy, but I thought this was just really emblematic of the kind of game he played in the second half. Armand missed a three in the corner and hustled after his miss ended up driving in great shot, fake scored the bucket. It again, you know, this was kind of another little lull for Indiana offensively, uh, and and Florida State had cut the lead to seven. That put Indiana back up nine. Just a really huge play. And I thought, Ryan, all night long, Armand did the little things. You know, he ended up scoring nine points, and he did some nice things offensively, but, you know, had four rebounds, only had the one turnover. But it just seemed like every time there was a hustle play to be made, Armand was in there doing it, being physical, you know? And, and you know, again, uh, you know, I, I, you never want to criticize a guy too much after a win, but you know, in the night when Al Durham, again, I thought did not was not able to handle the pressure and the physicality of the game, which has been something we've seen from him. And it's just, you know, as he continues to mature as a player and a leader, it's something that he's gonna to have to get better at. Armand for a freshman, I thought was much more ready for that on a consistent basis tonight. And, you know, look, he still has to be able to hit jump shots more consistently and, and all these different things, but for a freshman to be that ready for just the physical kind of grinded out nature of this game on both ends, really impressive performance. And you, you know what you could see, you could see Armand's confidence growing. Yep. Like he had some open shots and he took them. And even though he missed a couple of them, he was in rhythm. He didn't hesitate. And he was just out there to make plays. And I think this was a big stepping stone game for him. 
he was far more confident bringing the ball up than anyone else on the floor. I thought, I thought Devonte at times looked comfortable at times kind of was looking to pass the ball as quickly as he could uh, look against your press. You're supposed to pass your way out. You're not supposed to dribble your way out, but if you ISO the dribble, sometimes you can get out of it that way easier. Uh, Al did not look comfortable bringing the ball up at all. And he shouldn't, he's not a point guard. He's the, he's supposed to be the backup point guard, the starting like, uh, you know, off guard and a backup point guard. And Rob Finnessy is supposed to do that. Um, but he still so could the, have done it better than he did tonight. I, I, mean. I, I, I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying it's, that's not hit what we have him on the team for. It's, you know, he was forced into action basically is what I'm saying. And uh, I thought Armand Franklin looked much better doing it. And I thought Armand was, was, had a steady confidence all night. And, and I, I do, I think Al got rattled a little bit by the defense and I don't know. We'll see how this plays out with Al next. Um, but he did, he needs to be playing off the ball more and not on it. And, and I think that, that Armand Franklin is a guy who needs to have the ball in his hands to, to initiate the offense. I think Armand is the backup point guard. I, I think that he has established that early in the season that he should be the backup point guard behind Rob Finnessy. The other guy should be playing off the ball. You bring the other guys in for a you know three to five minute stretch when you know both of those guys need a break, but they're not the guys that you want primarily handling the ball at any point because they're just not there yet. They're not at that. They're not. That's not where their skill set lies. And and look, I, I think that Al did some positive things on the defensive end tonight. Uh, offensively, it just wasn't there. I thought that he had a couple drives that were like really nice, and you were kind of like, okay, Al's getting into the game now. And it just, yeah, I, it, I thought it in never the first half. I thought in the first half he did. I, I thought he played well in the first half. I thought he passed up some opportunities to really go downhill and go at the basket early. But then he really started doing it the second part of the of the first half, and he you know he ended up getting a couple layups, uh, you know did have three assists. It was really it was more in the second half, and I don't you know I don't know if that was fatigue physically or mentally. You know I don't know. He just he didn't look like the same guy from half one to half two to me because for a, a big part of the first half he was aggressive and handling it well. So you know something happened. He just wasn't able there in the second half to continue that on. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's just something that especially if Rob's out, you know. Look, I love Devontae. We're not always going to get 30 points from Devontae Green, no. you know? And no, so and, and Al's going to have a game where we, get, where we get eight. <laughs> I mean, maybe we know? will. Who knows? Anything seems possible with Devontae right now, Andy. But that's where, you know, Al's going to have to be the guy to pick up that slack. He didn't tonight. His teammates picked him up. Awesome. It was a great team win, and he contributed to it. But that's just something with the, you know, the guard issues that we have and the lack of depth, something to watch out for moving forward. Yeah, with with Al, I mean, I think the the play that typifies that a little bit is, you know, Trace ended up starting to bring the ball up the floor, and then Archie's losing his mind, yelling at Al <laughs> to go back and get yep. the ball from him. So, uh, but but with Armand, definitely that play that you mentioned was was a good one. He only ended up with one turnover on a night when uh, pretty much everybody had had more than that. And I thought generally when he was bringing the ball up, he didn't seem to let them speed him up in, in a way that they were able to really speed everybody else up. I just remember even at a time that he was bringing up the ball against Trent Forrest, he's one of the better defenders in the, the ACC. He was just methodical about kind of moving him side to side and, you know, crossing him over enough to, you know, protect the ball and get up the court. But it wasn't a, Hey, I got to blow by this guy and get there. He was, uh, he was, he was calm, uh, at least seemed to be for the most part in those scenarios. So I think that's a, a good sign. Cause that's a skill that is uh, difficult to, to cultivate in anybody, let alone, uh, a true freshman playing in that environment. So I, I thought it was a, a impressive performance from him. I think, you know, your point about him growing in confidence over the course of the game is something that I think other guys got less confident at times uh, over the course of the game as, as Florida state, you know, leaned on him a little bit more. Uh, but I thought he, I thought he did play well, made a couple of big shots, made, uh, made his free throws down the stretch and, and grabbed four rebounds. So uh, a fairly solid all around game from him in a, a difficult, difficult environment. And, you know, again, we kind of go back to don't know when the starting lineup changes. Uh, I know that was brought up a couple times tonight before, uh, you know, even before Devontae scored 30. But, uh, you know, I, I think Armand is playing in a way that you know, his performance tonight isn't one that says like, hey, this guy doesn't need to start. I don't think this team, if everybody's full strength and where they need to be, I don't think he's a starter on this team. But um, he... he He's making it at least a little bit difficult for somebody to say, "Hey, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be out there, uh, you shouldn't be out there starting." I thought it was a, a solid performance and a really tough test. His his first big time test uh, for him tonight. I mean, Archie tends to be a guy that likes to let starting lineups that are working roll, and 
you know, this lineup is working in terms of results. And maybe, you know, I hope someone asks him because maybe also he th- he likes, you know, Devontae scoring punch when that bench unit comes in and some guys function better when they can watch a few minutes of action. Devontae could be that guy. I don't know. It certainly worked tonight. Let's go inside the numbers. I thought there were three key numbers to look at tonight that I wrote about in our community earlier today. Um, you know, the first one was free throw attempts. I thought that number, given what these two teams like to do offensively, and the fact that Florida State puts teams on the free throw line a lot, I thought that was you know really where Indiana was going to have to have an advantage if they were going to win. And if you told me coming into the game that Indiana would shoot 38 and Florida State would only shoot 16, I would have felt really good about our chances. If you also told me that we out-rebounded them by 10, I wouldn't have thought that a 16-point victory would be outlandish. And that's exactly what Indiana did. And from a turnover perspective, because that was the third number, Indiana finished with 18 turnovers, not good. They did force 14 on Florida State. And the one other meaningful moment, there was a stretch in the second half where Indiana forced turnovers on four straight possessions. And the way that they did it is, well, yes, it was all travels because they competed with ball handlers. What have we talked about? Compete with ball handlers. You don't necessarily have to beat them, but you've got to hustle and, you know, get back. Don't let them beat you to the basket. Redirect them. And that's what Indiana did. They just challenged ball handlers with competitive, tough defense. And it forced Florida State into travels. The other turnover is when Devontae slapped the ball out of the guy's hand and it mm-hmm. went off his leg. So, yeah, you don't want to lose the turnover battle by four. But given the context of what Florida State's defense likes to do and the fact that you were able to out-rebound them and, and do what you wanted to do, dictate you know the, the style of the game by getting to the line that much, those numbers really ended up in Indiana's favor. I thought they were the keys, and basically you know, they worked out to – what should have been a 16-point victory, and it was. And so that was nice to see Indiana able to really do the things that they wanted to do coming into the game um, from that perspective. Uh, Andy, what else jumped out to you from a numbers perspective? Yeah, the turnovers were interesting in in both halves that IU turned the ball over a ton in the beginning of the first half. I was trying to do the, the math on this for the second half, but I think IU had turned it over maybe eight times or no, five times in their first I don't know, a handful of possessions in the second half and then one over the, the remainder. And then the, the second half, it was, you know, maybe 10 of their first 25, they're turning the ball over, which 40%, not great. Uh, but that, that led to a, a stretch at the end where they stopped turning the ball over and during that run scored on almost every possession down the stretch just because they were actually able to take care of the ball um, and made, you know, made, got to the free throw line, did all the things that, that you talked about there. And and it just was kind of night and day, which was odd to me. In the first half, I, I kind of understood it in the sense that maybe it overwhelms you at the beginning and you work your way into into a good groove and you take better care of the ball as the half goes on. The second half, that was surprising. You actually felt like it would get worse, uh, although there wasn't a whole lot of room for it to get worse given how it was uh, at times there. But, um, you know, those, the, the numbers that you talked about were really the, the big ones that stood out. I think from an, a defensive standpoint, I think you only had one steal uh, and no blocks at halftime. Had four blocks and four steals in the second half. So even though, in some ways, from a defensive standpoint, they they struggled a little bit at times in the second half. Um, I thought there was good activity level there. Uh, second chance points were pretty much even. Uh, points in the paint were pretty much even. It was really, uh, you know, the the margin of victory was 16 points, and that's how many points IU outscored them. Uh, at the free throw line. So uh, I, I think continuing to be able to do that, yeah, like so many other things, there were questions, is IU going to be able to to do this once the competition ratchets up? And this game is a little bit hard to gauge because Florida State does play so aggressively that they are apt to put uh, put people on the, on the free throw line and the percentage wasn't as good. Free throw defense is back though, 44% from the line tonight. Awesome. Hey, there we go. You know, it's also probably worth noting, Florida State, this was their third game in five days. They played back-to-back games Friday, Saturday. They look like they ran out of gas a little bit down the stretch. You know, and so I don't know if that contributed to well, it, too. That, but they, that they, coincided. Indiana just had more toughness, more fight, more energy those final six, eight minutes. Um, which well, that was that, nice that coincided see. with Indiana stepping up defensively as well. Yes. So I think that the two combined to, you know, this wound up being a 16-point game. It doesn't feel like a 16-point game. It feels like they won a close game because for most of the second half, it was a close game. And and it, once Indiana started pushing, the crowd got back into it, the defense ratcheted up and just felt like Florida State was ready to get out of there. Um, that's the way it felt to me, anyway. I, but I don't, I don't, 
I think that talking about tiredness takes it away from Indiana, takes something away from Indiana's win because Florida State really got it going in the second half, early in the second half. And I think that Indiana really dropping the hammer there in the yeah. last few minutes to sort of reverse that tide, that's what caused them to look tired. I, I think that yep, until then they were, they were going they were going off they were going off adrenaline because they were really in the game and you know got down to three several times and Indiana didn't let it get any closer. I mean, look, it's hard to come back on teams. And we, you know, we talked about how Florida State was just grinding their way back, but we also made them grind too. So I, I agree. Like I, I think you know, any fatigue that they had at the end, certainly our play contributed to it, and the way for that sure. we were just ready for the fight at the end of the game. Um, you know, just getting all which the I think would surprise and, a lot of people, given the age of this team, given the fact that they hadn't really played anybody and all of that. Indiana got punched in the mouth and punched back, as opposed to just you know taking it and trying to run the clock out and with the win. They actually punched back and closed hard. This looked like the kind of team that we've been promised, you know, from Archie Miller. I mean, a tough team. And I mean, some of the defense that we saw, especially that defense from about the 15 minute mark to maybe the six, seven minute mark in the first half. I mean, that was amazing that was elite. defense. That was it elite was, defense. Yeah, just outstanding. Um, any- also worth noting, Indiana. Uh, well, I guess I'll save that for, for statistics. I actually have some statistics this time, Jared. Well, this is the statistics segment. In case you, well, were. I, I thought Andy was going to go. <laughs> we're still, we're no, still. Didn't. I already, just... <laughs> I already talked. We're still on the podcast. Don't worry. All right. One point. Will this be on the podcast. Nine four <laughs> points was per possession against that defense is awesome. Uh, and also, Indiana led for thirty four minutes. They got the lead and held it and, and didn't give it up and only trailed for four minutes and forty three seconds. So you're at home. Take the lead and 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 hold it as long as you can. I think that's the that's the I mean that's the because it's, it's tough to come strategy. back. <laughs> well, but it's tough to come back at Assembly Hall. I mean, you know, we've had games before where they've made great comebacks and won at the end. But it's it's you know if you're the if you're the team that's if you're if you have the home court advantage of an Assembly Hall, you want to wear teams down with yeah. that lead and and making them climb that hill with that crowd involved is so difficult. So I, I just feel like. That that's the way you win at Assembly Hall is to get a lead and make the force the other team to play better than they've been playing, as opposed to you know maybe starting slowly as we've seen and then coming back and you know no get the lead early and and build on it and build on it and build on it and get that crowd fired up early so you're not in the second half you're not making a run hoping the yeah. crowd can lift you and remember it doesn't always have to be a dunk or a three that gets the crowd back going into it sometimes it's a hustle play like that gets the crowd going we're all we about that defense that tonight. tonight yeah all about that defense tonight. yeah andy uh one final note yeah i just just looking at the assist numbers it was it was an odd kind of looking at, at both halves. So Florida State only had two assists in the entirety of the first half. I think that speaks to the defense that you talked about, really forced guys to make individual plays. And there was a couple times at least that they made really difficult shots uh, at, with the either the shot clock running down or just guys just having to throw the ball up. And then IU turned around, gave up three assists really early in the second half. I think before that defensive switch, um, for that defensive switch that we talked about with you know bringing in different personnel going a little bit smaller and then they had two assists for the entire rest of the half so again got back to making them do that now IU was a little bit the opposite of that where they had seven assists in the first half just three in the second some of that is getting to the line 26 times and uh not not getting as many shots some of that is having Devontae Green just be able to make in great individual plays when you really needed him to um but just I, I thought limiting them limiting Florida State in that way is another good stat to, to talk about how good the defense really was in spurts because um, that, you know, to, to be able to just say, Hey, we're, we're going to might get beat off the dribble a couple of times. And uh, that certainly happened, but, but really being able to force things within the flow. Cause when I use gotten torched, it, it feels like against teams like this teams start making a bunch of threes. They're swinging the ball around guys are getting in rotations and, and doing that. They weren't giving up made baskets on those kinds of plays more often than not tonight. One more number. I saw uh, Jack Grossman tweet out from Florida State's like little pregame stats that they send out to the media. There was a note that Florida State seven and zero this season when they outscore their opponents. Oh. Still, still seven and zero when they outscore their opponents. Hey, uh, yeah, that hasn't <laughs> changed. Uh, one, one last note uh, with all the fouls that were called in this game on Florida State and everything. Indiana only had one player with three fouls. And that was Armand Frank. And that was almost Deron Davis in one minute. Yeah, and everybody <laughs> else, everyone else was two or fewer. So they guarded without getting into foul trouble, and that's again really key Huge. to the Big Ten season, <laughs> especially in the backcourt because Armand is the guy that ended up with three, but he got those two pretty early, and 
it was another case where he, he ended up playing a little bit in the end of the first half with two fouls uh, in some ways out of necessity, just because there weren't enough guards, but that's, uh, there's probably some ability for IU to get into a little bit of foul trouble on the front line, but not in the backcourt. So uh, a good job by them to really stay out of it because things could have gotten a little bit dicier from a ball handling standpoint without him. Yep. All right. Coming up on the assembly call, we will hand out our game balls. That should be a fun discussion. And then we will hit any other lingering storylines from this game. Then we will look ahead to Indiana's upcoming game against Wisconsin. Then it'll be time for last call. Lots still to do. That's next here on the assembly call. Stick with us. This is Nick Zeisloff. I never miss an open three, and I never miss an episode of The Assembly Call. Thank you, Nick. You are listening to The Assembly Call IU postgame show. Catch us live immediately following every IU basketball game, plus every Thursday night at our website, assemblycall.com. While you are there, make sure that you sign up for our free IU Hoops email newsletter. Over 7,000 of your fellow IU fans have subscribed. You can also text IU to 66866 to subscribe to the newsletter. That's IU to 66866. Or just send Ryan a text, and he'll make sure that you get uh, put on the right list because he knows we'll how all that we, works. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> I'm Jared Morris here with Andy Bottoms and Ryan Phillips having a very jubilant and celebratory episode of the Assembly Call. This is you know, this is our eighth victorious episode of the year, but it certainly feels different than, uh, than the others. A lot more fun, Andy, than the... Uh, Kind of the, you know, I don't know, somber is not the right word, but it certainly wasn't a very fun South South Dakota yeah. State episode. <laughs> this, yeah, this I was glad I didn't have to better. be on that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one is a lot better. All right, well, it is time now for our Game Ball segment, sponsored by Trace Jackson Davis, uh, who has won five of them coming into tonight. He has five. Al has one. Devontae has one. Feels like a night where it might go to someone besides Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hand mine out first. It's going to Devontae. Um, you know, for all the imperfections of this game with the turnovers, you know, much more good Devontae tonight than bad. He was 10 for 15, 5 of 7 from downtown. Indiana was 7 for 15 overall as a team, uh, which is big. I mean, they matched Florida State. Both teams hit seven threes. Devontae's were huge. I mean, that's. That's the role that he's going to play on this team. And he did all the stuff that we talked about in the offseason for why he's such an important cog. But I'm going I'm to say two other things that we haven't mentioned. Devontae had six rebounds tonight. He was second on the team in rebounds. And I thought defensively for most of the night, he was tough. He was up in them. And, and, and I thought he really set the tone defensively. That was the first thing I noticed about him when he got on the court is he was there to play defense tonight. And, you know, so that was great to see. So the, the, the points are going to get the headlines and rightfully so. And people are going to talk about the turnovers and rightfully so. But rebounding and on ball defense to me, you know, they weren't as important as the points because at the end of the day, you know, sometimes it's just nice to have a guy who scores 30. But the fact that he did it all, you know, I, I just thought from your upperclassmen, from he and Justin Smith to really be out leading with that effort, with that toughness, uh, was really big. And I thought he brought it from the first moment he was on the court. So he gets my game ball for a number of reasons. Uh, Ryan, who gets your game ball? I mean, why are we even doing this? It's Devontae. That okay. was that was the Devontae show tonight. Um, as good as he's ever been in an IU uniform, good for him to do it as a senior. Five of seven from three tonight. Uh, some of them were questionable, but they kept falling. It was really funny. Every time he'd pull up for one, he was like, you can tell he's heat checking right now. And the answer was, yep, every time he was on fire. Uh, IU finished seven of 15 from three tonight. Five of seven from from Devonte. That's the reason. So they shot forty six point seven percent, mostly because of him. And on the year, Devonte Green is hitting fifty two percent of his three point shots. Uh, this is the guy you need. You need a guy on this team who's going to be able to do some things from the perimeter. I think Rob Finnessy can do those things too, but he's not with us right now. Uh, and so Devonte Green stepped up in a huge, huge way, and and he gets the game ball, no question. He's, he's still with us. He's he's here. He's alive. He's, he's not. He's bench. not. He's not on the show. Where is he, Jared? Have you booked him as a guest yet? <laughs> Um, so Andy, you have the luxury now. You can kind of go off the board and give honorable mention to somebody. I tell you who's not going to get honorable mention: the announcers. That was not a, uh, a well announced game from my perspective, and clearly from the was perspective it an ACC of many, crew? Was it an ACC network crew? I think that's an ACC network. I, th- crew. I think it was. I mean, that that makes sense that they were talking on Florida State that much. Quite frankly, yeah. Uh, Andy, I, who who do you want to mention for your game ball? 
I mean, I, I feel like my credibility would be called into question if I went with someone other than Devante, as you Just suggested. Give it to Devante and then the give board. someone honorable mention. Have some. Fun I'm going to give it. it to, I'm going to give it to Devante, and then I'm going to I'm going to share these couple quotes that came from the post game about Devante that I think all all of which tell us and really reinforce everything that we think we already know about him. So Archie's quote was, "Devonte Green was special tonight. There wasn't a lot of coaching that went into what he did, <laughs> as usual." <laughs> Which I thought was good. <laughs> then the other one was when the players, Justin Smith post game and when Devontae Green gets hot, I tell him to keep shooting, but take good shots. To which Green apparently replied, every shot's a good shot. That's and tonight, the least and tonight, shocking, the least and shocking tonight, quote of it was. Just, yeah. Let, let's just, just linger on this because there is a two for 15 with six turnover game coming that we're going to lose. Whoa, whoa, like, whoa. It's, Why it's jinx gonna, it? It's going to happen. We just, we know you're going to get some good. You're going to get some bad, but. This was a very important night for the good to come out. And we hope that when we have that bad Devontae game, because it's coming, that guys like Al step up and other guys step up. And just, you know, we, all, we know how this experience is. Now, the, the, the path to Indiana being really good is for there to be more good Devontae than, than, than we've seen in the past, a higher proportion of it. But, you know, you're going to go through some highs and lows. And tonight was an incredible high. I See, the thing, that to me, the shooting... There will be some inconsistencies there. We know the turnovers are going to happen. They're going to happen in bunches. But when he's defending like he did tonight, when he's rebounding, when he's doing those things, when he's active with his hands, getting deflections, like that's the kind of stuff that he can do night after night after night after night, even if you know his offense is struggling a little bit. And so you know that's why I was so encouraged to see that. Um, yeah. But yeah, Devontae the, Green. Game the ball. other thing that goes along with it is uh, our text chain from during the game, uh, during which Coach, within not even a minute of each other, Sent these two tweets in succession. Devonte out of control. Devonte under control. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was more of the latter, so that's a good thing. By the way, did you notice honorable mention to Mike Roberts, who just went nuts on the sideline at one point? I think it was in the first half. I don't know what. Like someone must have missed a defensive assignment or something. It wasn't like for an obvious thing. It's just, I guess, Mike Roberts' eagle eye, you know, picking out someone with like a bad help rotation or something. But he went nuts on the sideline. I know Coach was cheering and, uh, you know. Very Loving excited. It. Yeah, Loving very, very excited about that. Um, all right. So what else have we not talked about? I mean, you know, we should we should certainly give uh, that was a funny quote, Andy, about, you know, with Archie Miller, not a lot of coaching went into what Devontae did. But I, you know, I thought Archie Miller, you know, he had his guys ready to play and, you know, they executed the game plan tonight. I mean, the game plan is pounded inside, get to the free throw line, own the glass. They did that. I thought, you know. There was a, a a certain time there in the second half where Jerome Hunter and Demizi were really shaky with their ball handling. You know, he got Jerome out of there and he trusted Demizi, and Demizi, you know, proved him right as we've talked about. And so, you know, I thought he shortened the bench. Joey Brunk didn't play a ton um, in the second half. He would come in for a few spells here and there, but I think Archie realized that they were really able to take advantage of Indiana um, on the defensive end when Joey was in there. And Deron Davis played that one stretch for one minute and didn't see the floor again. Um, it, you know, so overall, it kind of felt like the rotations made some sense, had the guys ready to play, and they went out and executed the game plan. So, you know, tip of the cap to Archie Miller and the coaching staff for, you know, being able to navigate this game without Rob Finnessy and with it being the first real test of the season, you know, they passed it. Yeah, I thought I thought with the lineup stuff in particular, they really pushed the right buttons at, at pretty much every turn. Uh, Brunk was really struggling, particularly at the beginning of the second half. But I, again, even in the first half, some of the same stuff, we the overly aggressive hedge and, and things like that, where I think we've beaten that into the ground a little bit. But I, I really thought, you know, Florida State made the first move to go small coming out of the locker room. Uh, but I thought Archie was was relatively quick to change that up. And as you said, with Demizi, uh really had Al off the floor for a decent amount toward the end, had Demizi in there, and I think he played well and. Uh, he he really stuck with the group that was playing well together. So uh, overall, overall a good uh, a good performance. Another good Archie quote. Speaking of him on the uh, on the performance at the free throw line. Schedule this, schedule that. We're a team that is built to do one thing really well, and that's get fouled. <laughs> I mean, it's it's true. <laughs> yeah. Playing the paint, you'll you'll pick up fouls on the opposing team. But they, uh, I mean, I, again, I mean that that speaks to what you said though. Like they, there's a clear philosophy, whether that's born out of. I'm not sure what else to do with this team or whether that's born out I, of, I, think I really Archie, think this is an efficiency. Like they know what they want to do and they have really regardless of opponent been able to come out and execute that pretty well. Now, maybe somebody's going to be able to adjust and, and force them away from that and really, 
you know, pack it in, force them to make shots from the outside, that day will come, I'm sure. But for now, they've really got a firm philosophy and you know what to look for coming into the game. And you've got a handful of things that you can really look at statistically and say, these are going to tell me pretty quickly whether they're playing well and playing the way they want to in any given game. And no, if look, that I'm day sure comes, though. by the way, Andy, and if that day comes, and if Demisi is a guy that you can trust, that's going to help out a ton when people start packing the paint because there's a guy who can step out and make shots. You know, that's you know, why his yeah. play is such a big development. Guys, I don't know what you're worried about. I'm sure we're going to go to the line 38 times at the goal center. I don't know what you're... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. By the way, okay, so before we talk about that impending trip to the goal center, great quote from Leonard Hamilton on Indiana, throwing a little shade at Purdue. There's no doubt that this is the best team we've played to this point. I'll, I'll I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah. I'll just agree. Hilarious technical yeah. foul that he got, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. First of all, that was the fast. Like, I'll take it, but that was the fastest five-second call I, I've seen in a very long time. And... Quite frankly, I agreed with this with him arguing it. And how about I mean, how about Justin Smith just hammering that guy on the drive where he didn't touch him? And got I know, the foul I called. know, <laughs> I know. And they showed the replay. It was just like really. Yeah. Well, the worst part was they showed where one of the officials was who actually blew the whistle, who was in no position to see whether there was no. any contact whatsoever. Ah, well, who cares? Oh. We won by sixteen. Um, there you go. Do we need? Do we need to talk about anybody else? I mean, no, I, think I guess we, we can save all. some of that for Assembly Call Radio. We pointed out most yeah. of the most of the big things. So let's look ahead. Um, Indiana has not won the Kohl Center in forever. Uh, it feels like it's been 75 years. It hasn't been quite that long, but it's been a lot. Uh, but that's where we go on Saturday. And if the chat mob is to be believed, uh, Indiana is actually favored in Ken Palm. And this is true. Indiana uh, now 65-64 is the expected uh uh, score there with a 52% chance to win for Indiana. Um, Andy, as you look toward that game, I mean, this Wisconsin team, you know, they are 56th in Ken Palm right now. They've obviously, you know, they had a really nice performance against Marquette, beating them by 16, but they've lost three games all to top 100 competition. But, you know, they kind of seem to be struggling to find themselves a little bit, and they are not in the top 100 offensively right now. So, you know, what, what, what should we expect and where are the opportunities for Indiana to really take advantage of this Ethan hapless Wisconsin? Ooh, hapless. Interesting. Uh, now I think they've all their three losses have come on neutral floors. Uh, Ken Palm traditionally very high in Wisconsin has clearly turned on them, predicting them to lose their next three in a row, including a road game at Rutgers, which I suppose we have seen with Wisconsin before, but not, uh, not, not too much lately. I, I think defensively you, you're going to see, you know, similar things to what you, you normally would. They do rank pretty well, uh, on that side of things. They really prevent offensive rebounds, which, uh, as we talked about, it'll be interesting for, for IU and they keep opponents off the line. So they're 11th in, oh. uh, defensive rebounding percentage and they're 33rd Shocking. in uh, defensive free throw rate. So, um, you know, those are two of the, the keys really for IU. So how, how well IU can, uh, can overcome those things will be, uh, will be important. And then on the offensive side, I, I think they're really just struggling. There's not really any one thing short of shooting free throw as well, where they're seventh in the country. As I look at this now, um, they haven't shot the three particularly well. They're outside of the top 130 in each of the four factors offensively. So I, I think similar to what most people would have suspected in the sense that it was going to be a transitional time for them to, as they move away from, from Hap. And even though in some ways it was easy to point out his limitations in terms of being able to step out on the floor and make shots, they ran so much through him. Even when he wasn't the one shooting, it, it just become, I think it's a difficult transition as you, as you move forward with him. So, um, a lot of the the names are guys who have have been around in, in terms of Brad Davison and Demetric Trice in the backcourt and uh, Nate Reavers uh, in the front court is is really the guy to watch there. But uh, it's it's a team right now that's still searching a little bit and and potentially a good time uh, to face them. They play at NC State. Uh, on Wednesday, I was going to say tomorrow, but I guess technically for me, that's today uh, at this point. So uh, if anybody wants to at least kind of get an idea of, of what they look like this year, uh, that's a potential you know, game to watch and kind of see. So they've got a bit shorter turnaround, although they're, uh, you know, got the game at home on, on Saturday. So it, it's, it, it, you, we're, no IU fan is going to go into the Cole Center with any confidence whatsoever uh, under any circumstance. But I do think if there's a, a reasonable time to catch Wisconsin, 
uh, I think now while they're still trying to sort things out, particularly on the offensive end, uh, is a good play is a good time to do it. Ryan, would you like to offer any words of wisdom? Uh, how many? What's the over under on uh, fake charges that Brad Davidson's going to take and get called? Four and a half. Mm. Four and a half. You see, the other night we had five, and four of them were clearly blocks. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Sounds about right. <laughs> ah, well, we have plenty of time to talk about that on. If they're, if they're sending out, you know how they always talk about in the NFL when they're doing like rule changes and they go around to the teams and have like a video like showing them mm-hmm. what these calls look like. Do you think that the the video they sent around to to get flop the whole new flopping rule out there is just like all Brad Davidson or is it like just ninety percent? I think it's, it's his YouTube mixtape. Yeah, yeah. Just, I think it's ninety percent. Brad Davidson, yeah, yeah, I that think guy, so. man. I lo- I love that he has this reputation. Oh, he's such a good defender. He'll step in and take a try. He's a terrible defender. If you're flopping on the ground, you're not a good defender. I'm sorry. It's like when Wojo used to have that reputation. He'd step in and take charge. Everybody like, oh my god, he's such a good defender. It's like, no, he's on his back, and the guy who he's defending has the ball. <sighs> What's up, Ryan? Ethan here. <laughs> This is why he yeah. doesn't listen to the episodes that you're on. I know. I know. I'm sure he's good friends with Brad Davis and taught him everything he knows. Uh, all right. You are Let's listening. get out of here on a positive I note. Know. Come on. I know. You are listening to the Assembly Call You Post Game Show. Remember, because you're an Assembly Call listener, you get 30% off your order at homefieldapparel.com. So I don't know if they have the 30% off code going publicly anymore because I know it was the that Black Friday deal was supposed to end. But you can get it for sure with the Cyber Assembly promo code. So if you want a great deal on the most comfortable and unique IU apparel that you will find anywhere, go to homefieldapparel.com. Use that promo code CYBERASSEMBLY to get 30% off your entire order. All right, guys, it is time for last call. Let's wrap this up, bring it back around with some positive thoughts about this huge victory for Indiana over Florida State by 16 points tonight. Uh, Andy, you're in the Eastern time zone, so you get to go first. (laughs) Good, good. Glad to. Such (laughs) such a benefit of being in the Eastern time zone. Uh, just a, a, a really there, like we said, there were plenty of things. Some of the turnovers were uh, were ugly at times and felt like a reversion to what we had had seen in the past. But for a team that's that's pretty young to be able to overcome those against a really strong defensive team, certainly playing at home helps. But for a team that you know their mo, their identity is to really just grind people down, and and IU played some of his best basketball at the end of the game. It, after using a pretty short rotation over over most of the second half, I thought that was was as impressive as anything we saw in this game. Devonte stepping up was was huge, as we've talked about, and the kind of leadership that you look for from him, and, and the kind of game that if you spun forward his performances from the end of last season to this one, uh, the kind of thing that you really looked for and 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 hope to see a lot of. So those are are definitely the positives. Team passed the first real test i guess you i guess if you want to you want to think of it that way and and now it becomes the schedule for all the the complaints about it and things like that it is kind of a progression they they work their way up to get ready for this game uh I, I think we all felt like by the end of the south dakota state game that they they were kind of done um looking at that we were kind of done watching them play teams like that and so tonight was the first uh first test and they passed it now the next test is can you go and, and handle your first road game in a place where you've traditionally had little to no success? And can you follow up a big win by not having a letdown in, in that scenario when, yeah, nobody's going to get terribly upset if you lose that game in the Cole Center, despite Wisconsin being down. But how do you follow up a performance like this? And I thought that was, uh, I think that's what I'm most interested to see as we move forward. But as we talked about before, from an identity standpoint, I think this team is starting to get one and that's something that's really been lacking. We we spent so much of last season trying to figure out what's this team really good at? What do they stand for? Who are they? Um and and you clearly don't have an identity when you're losing 12 out of 13 games and I think this team for for better or worse you can you can like it or not, their identity is trying to get to the free throw line, really being tough on the glass and uh and, and improving defensively. And so if tonight was a, a good step in that direction. I think it's another step further toward a, a team really defining its identity and, and giving an idea of what they can be going forward. And uh, that, it, based on tonight's performance, is exciting to see. And and like I said, hopefully uh, they can follow that up with a, a road win to start uh, Big Ten play in December, which I know Ryan loves. <laughs> yes. It's my favorite uh, thing. Ryan, tip off at 4 o'clock Eastern. 
What are we thinking Solid. about that? Okay, is that is that okay? It's good. It's an evening game, I would say. Late afternoon, evening. I'm good with that. Noon is what I don't like. Noon is the okay. is the no. Okay. Is the no no. Mostly because sure. I don't want to watch a college basketball game at nine a.m. Let's be let's be real. I want to settle into my day, <laughs> not be screaming at the television at nine fifteen in the morning. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I I think that tonight was a huge huge win for uh, for Archie Miller and and the program uh, finally on a national stage to be questioned about your schedule and all that stuff and then come out and and get a 16 point win over a top 15 top 17 team uh that people are really talking about as being one of the better teams in the ACC this year and this was a good team and it was a well coached team and a team that does some things that usually make Indiana sort of skittish like pressure the ball and and especially without your starting point guard i mean there's a lot going on here that did not bode well for Indiana and the Hoosiers handled all of it and, and won going away by 16 points. I, I don't think you can undervalue what happened in, in, in Bloomington tonight. Uh, Devontae Green also stepping up as a senior leader and, and showing out and having a huge game, when stepping up especially when his team needed it. I mean, most of those threes came, and, and those big shots that he made came when the team really needed a bucket, and, and he stepped up. And as we know, and we've seen in the past, that's not always going to happen with Devontae. He's not always going to hit those, but he stepped up big time tonight and, and helped prove that the team he's a captain of is for real and not, you know, a, you know, a paper undefeated team just because they haven't played anybody. I thought he stepped up and played really well. Um, you know, this is a team that's going to continue to learn, build, and grow. And I think that there's some guys who didn't have great games tonight who can still be a huge part of this team moving forward. And they need to see what happened, learn, and and, and move up. I mean, you think about it, this team missed 15 free throws, and that hasn't been their MO this year. They've, been, they've made free throws this year. They missed 15. This could have been an even bigger win if they just took care of business there. They turned it over 19 times, or uh, sorry, 18 times. You know, they don't do, they, they cut back on those. This could have been an even bigger win. They could have they could have hung a hundred if they had played a little tighter. Um, so these are things that this team you can be excited about this win, but the ceiling on this team is much higher than they showed tonight because there were a lot of mistakes and a lot of problems and a lot of things they got to work through. And the offense stagnated and the defense gave up easy drives at a couple points, but they still were able to work it out and and make a you know make a statement with a big win tonight. And that's encouraging. The fact that this team can continue to get better and and that they really showed something tonight with that fight and that heart. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what you love to see from tonight. I mean, you know, I I talked about on the halftime report when Indiana was up 11, that Florida state was undoubtedly going to grind their way back into it. And Indiana was going to have some offensive droughts and how they responded to those moments would be what told the story of the rest of this game. And they responded great. You know, Trace Jackson Davis kind of, you know, helped to maintain that lead around the eight minute mark. And then Devante took over after that. And, it was just, you know, it was great to see a team really come together and play together. And you saw a lot of communication on the court, you know, like every time it, you know, cut to close ups of the guys, they were talking and communicating. And that's not something that we always saw last year. And that was nice to see. So, you know, look, you don't want to overreact to one victory. And we can all just think back to last year. You know, Indiana dominated Marquette, you know, early in the season at home. And, you know, so these wins, you know, it doesn't mean anything when January comes and when February comes. It's certainly going to mean something in March when it comes to your NCAA tournament resume, because this will, you know, almost surely be, you know, one of those tier one, you know, tier A, whatever it is, victories, you know, that you're looking to stack. Um, but, you know, the most important thing is, and, and you guys mentioned this, it really seemed like you saw a team and, and maybe even a program establish an identity. You know, that Florida State team is tough and they are a defensive minded team. And Indiana stood toe-to-toe with them without their best defender, without their most reliable ball handler, and they won that game by 16 points. That is impressive. I mean, this is a building block victory in a lot of ways for Indiana. Got to keep improving. Got to keep evolving. But, you know, you couldn't have asked for anything more from this program on December 3rd, from this team on December 3rd, than what you got tonight. And that bodes well for the future. It, It feels like Archie Miller really likes this team. And I think you saw why tonight. Because they play together and they play tough. And that's what you want. And if you can, you know, get some more continuity together in the pack line and, you know, establish even more chemistry together on offense, got a chance to be pretty good. And, and then that's what I exit tonight thinking. We got a squad. We got a team, you know, and we're, 
you know, no one was quite sure what to think in November, even though we had some good performances. But I think now we know, okay, we got a team. Let's go. Let's let's face December head on. Let's see what we got. Get Rob back. Get even better. But a really good night uh, for Indiana. A huge victory. And uh, obviously, we look forward to uh, seeing what the Hoosiers do from here on out with the Wisconsin game coming up on Saturday. All right, that's going to do it for us on this edition of the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. If you ever want to see us do the show live and be part of the live chat, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash assemblycall. And don't forget to go to assemblycall.com or text IU to 66866 to join our free email newsletter. Special thanks to longtime listener Bob Thompson, who produced a lot of the music that you hear on the show. And thank you for listening. We'll be back to talk with you Thursday for Assembly Call Radio and then after the Wisconsin game. Until then. Take it from me, Robert Johnson. Keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim. And go Hoosiers. Thank everybody for coming out. All right. I got to get out of here, folks. Thank you. I have a mad crush on Coach Roberts. (laughs) Ah. Good stuff, gentlemen. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. What do, uh, what's the uh, schedule for the rest of the week? So we got Thursday, Thursday night. Um, let's then, yeah, let's. I'll make. Sh- I think hopefully coach can come on Thursday. Let's get him on Thursday so we get his thoughts on the game. Um, so someone can take the night off. I'll be doing Wednesday and Thursday, so I'll be up in six hours. Uh, I still have to work for like another hour, and then I got to be up for three thirty in the morning for the morning radio show for two days. Mm. At 3 a.m., that 3.30 alarm comes fast, man. I it does. Tell you. It does. It comes fast. As Andy's over there, it's like almost Thursday in the Eastern time zone. Andy, <laughs> Andy doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> I got, it's well I into gotta, Thursday, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're at 12.30. I got up at 6 a.m. this morning so I could go to work early so that I could leave to go to Hannah's middle school game. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. Although I was struggling at like 8.30 this morning. So this is I'm really hit my stride now. Yeah, We're not as young as we used to be. No, definitely not. I got to go get some sleep. Okay. Definitely not. Uh, Good stuff. Thanks, everybody, for being here. By the way, that was the biggest live uh, audience that we've ever had. It got up over 500 at at a few points. That that is the most Mm -hmm. that I've ever seen. So thank you all for being here, even this week. It's so much fun to linger on these wins. It is. It is. Ah. By the way, I saw Jen like 10 minutes ago in the chat say, Devontae got 30. How did I miss that? Yeah, Jen. (laughs) How did you not watching that? the game, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> Felt like an important storyline. I'm not here to <laughs> I, yeah. Not here to judge. Cast dispersions on her by any <laughs> she, means. But she called I, herself out, so I feel comfortable calling her out. But <laughs> yeah, not the not the not exactly paying a whole lot of attention. But, you know, I knew there was a game going on, but <laughs> Oh man. It was gorgeous. Yes, it was gorgeous. It certainly <laughs> was. Um all right, all right. See y'all. Have a great night. Enjoy this one. See you guys. Talk to you Thursday night.